Hi everybody, it's Tim Topham here, and thank you so much for following along with the launch of my new book. This has been a labour of love, but a real pleasure as well, because I finally get to hold the printed book in my hand. Uh, we've been working on this for about a year, and it really encapsulates all my thinking around music and all the work that I've been doing for you for probably a decade now. So it's really exciting to be able to share it with you. And I thought today I'd do something a little bit different, and that's to have a little fireside, Chris, almost Christmas reading of one of my favorite parts of the book, which is actually the start of part one, where I tell the story of my son Jack bringing home one of his art class creations. So here it goes. Dad, Dad, look what I made. My son Jack came bursting through the door after school, eager to show me something in his bag. We did this cool thing in art and I brought it home for you, he said as he dumped his bag in the kitchen and started rummaging through it, eager to find his creation. Awesome. Do you want something to eat? I asked as I headed for the pantry. Maybe later, he replied without thinking. Jack's your typical year four kid, forever bringing things home from school. Normally those things end up in a scrunch mess at the bottom of his bag, smeared in banana and smelling like an old sock. So I was pleasantly surprised when this one appeared in one piece. Wow, Jack, that is so cool. What is it? And you know what? I actually have it here. You don't get this in the actual book. Here it is. He held out his creation to me. It was a small pottery cup, painted in a variety of colours and hanging from three pieces of string tied through holes near the rim of the cup and joined at the top, a little bit like a marionette. As it spun around, I noted a face drawn in texture on one side and these pipe cleaners or Chanel stems sticking out through holes in the face. Some of the pipe cleaners were adorned with beads near the ends and were all different colours. Come to think of it, I thought aloud, it looks a little like SpongeBob SquarePants. It's a cup person, silly, he replied. Oh, of course, now I see the face and the arms and legs. Wow, Jack, this is fantastic. Yeah, his name's Bob, and he can hang around and watch what you do, see? He held the top of the strings where the three pieces connected and hung it over a cupboard handle with the face pointing towards us. Bob slowly spun around in the light. Despite how his creation looked, the excitement on my son's face filled me with pride and I knew he'd enjoy showing others his wacky creation when they would visit the house. I laughed. Nice one. We should find a place to keep him safe so that everyone who comes to the house can check him out. Yeah, sure, he replied. And then he was off. Other exciting things to do. Can Billy come over? He shouted as he ran upstairs to change. And with that, the moment was gone. But not for me. As a music teacher with more than 20 years experience, I found myself pondering, why don't students learning music get to bring home their own creations, just like they do in art? I started thinking back to all the other things our boys had brought home from school over the years, paintings, etchings, carvings, fluffy balls, paper mache, models, and more. And then I started thinking back to my own school art classes and all the trinkets and knickknacks I created and excitedly shared with my own parents. In my childhood home, we had a wide picture rail running the length of the hallway, filled with homemade pottery boxes, medieval drinking cups, vases, and of course, back in those days, ashtrays, made by my siblings and me. I remember how proudly they'd be on display at home and remain there for years, even as we grew older. The thought of throwing them out was considered sacrilegious in some way. When my thoughts returned to the present, I felt a sense of loss for all the missed opportunities for music students to create something on their instrument and bring it home for their families to enjoy, all the musicians who enjoyed composing but were never encouraged or nurtured in their pursuit, all the music students who'd never enjoy the sense of satisfaction that comes with creating something personal from scratch that is your own, and for the parents who never experienced the joy of their children's musical creations, no matter how simple or discordant. So I began to wonder, why don't we give opportunities for kids to create things to take home in music lessons, just like they've always done in art class? Why hasn't Jack ever brought home wacky little creations from his music lessons? Why isn't music creation a regular part of the music lesson experience? So let me give you a little bit of history. The norm for any student when they start piano lessons is to be taught via a method book, and the majority of teachers will use them right from lesson one. There are many reasons why this has become commonplace. Method books are well-designed, easy to follow, build knowledge in a logical sequence, are what we know best, and don't require a lot of thinking or planning on behalf of the teacher. But they're all designed for one main purpose, to teach music reading. Sure, they cover aspects of artistry and interpretation, 
but by and large, their purpose is the teaching and deciphering of printed scores so that students can become more and more proficient in this area and play increasingly more complex music. While there's nothing wrong with teaching music reading per se, we have to ask ourselves, is that the most important part of being a musician? And perhaps more importantly, given the focus of this book, is that the best thing to teach students right from the start? I would argue a definitive no. And this book will explain why that's my stance and share what you can do instead. But before we get there, let's explore why method books and reading have become such a prevalent part of early music education. To find out more about that, you're gonna to need to read the book. Again, thanks for being a part of the book launch. Uh, this book is really for all of those teachers out there who want their students to become lifelong musicians. And that's all of us who want to give their students more than just a bit of technique and an ability to read music, but to give their students the skills where they can be confident in any situation and jam and make up music and play with friends and accompany that happy birthday for their grandmother's 90th birthday. So pick up your copy of No Book Beginners now at topmusic.co slash book. I can't wait to see how it will inspire you.